Jack Day files no confidence motion against APNU AFC government. President Granger diagnosed with cancer expected to fully recover. Police going after minibuses with loud music. And in sport, South Africa lose 9 for 28 as West Indies defend 107 in Women World T20. These and more right now in this our Thursday, November 15 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramudar. Thanks for joining us. We open tonight's broadcast by telling you that opposition leader Barbara Jagdi announces that he filed a no-confidence motion against the government in Parliament. Godfrey Brooms reports. Jagdio claimed that the government has fallen back on its promises and its policies are burdensome to the people. He claimed that Amerindians lost 30,000 jobs, 7,000 jobs were erased in the sugar sector, taxes increased by 60 billion, just to name a few of the policies. As such, the opposition party thought it best to file the no confidence motion, claiming that Guyanese are not benefiting from the government of the day. We're in a bad, bad shape. And therefore, we have decided to file the no confidence motion against them. So that will, that has been tabled in parliament and I suspect we are going to be addressing it shortly. Whether we win the no confidence motion or not, um, the country will benefit from it. Jack Dio claims whether or not the opposition wins the no-confidence motion, it will force the government to correct its ways. This motion has been filed as the APNU AFC government is six months into its fourth year. If the no-confidence motion is successful, parliament will be dissolved and the president will be required to name a date for elections within three months. The then combined opposition in 2014 APNU AFC had filed a no-confidence motion against the PPP government headed by President Donald Ramotar. They had stated the government was overspending and monies were illegally held by semi-autonomous agencies. The then opposition had claimed that the Ramotar administration had illegally restored money for the One Laptop Per Family program, Amerindian Development Fund, Hinterland Airstrip and a Children's School Vouchers Program. However, on November 10, 2014, President Ramatar prorogued the Parliament to avoid facing the no-confidence motion brought by the Alliance for Change. As a result of the combined opposition's failure to participate in dialogue, the President decided to call early elections. This allowed for a change of government in 2015. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Whether you're building your dream home or an industrial building, Gafours has everything you need for your construction projects. Available are steel rods, high tensile and mild steel, BRC fabric, steel beams and columns, galvanized deckings, steel pipes, angles and channels, Z and C purlings available in 4, 6 and 8 inches, corrugated zinc sheets in 6 design profiles, asphalt roofing shingles, the perfect concrete blocks in 4 and 6 inches, cement and stone. And to beautify your building, we stock a wide range of paints, machine tinted to match any color. Travel text in several shades, aluminium frame windows, curtain walls and doors, Mexican steel doors and decorative panel doors. Also available are finishing products such as PVC ceiling panels, floor and wall tiles, gypsum, MDF and cement board, laminated and bamboo floor panels, and sinks, toilet sets and cupboards. So, for your next construction project, check out your one-stop shop, Gafours, the name you can trust. Introducing the new Softex Toilet Tissue, now available across Guyana. 
Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. For the best in truck spares, Daff and Cummings, it's A1 out of value new road freedom hoop on the west side. Check them out today for seals, alternators, filters, air valves, pistons and rings, air dryers, shocks, bearings and a whole lot more. Parts and accessories for cars and minibuses. Call today on 254-0890. 64 new road freedom hoop on the west coast of Demerara. A1 out of value. Performance without compromise. Need a vacation? Thinking of leaving the country? Then visit Millennia Travel Agency and book your flight today. We are located on the top floor in the City Mall at Camp and Region Streets. We book flights for Caribbean Airlines, Suriname Airways, Copa Airlines, Liat, Fly Jamaica and all major airlines. We also book hotel and cruise packages. Visit or call us on 225-7354 for more information. Millennia Travel Agency for all your travel needs. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. President Granger had been diagnosed with a form of cancer and is receiving treatment. The Ghana Embassy in Cuba said he expected to fully recover shortly. According to a statement from the Ghana Embassy in the Republic of Cuba, President David Granger was diagnosed as suffering from non-Hodgkin lymphoma. According to the American Cancer Society, Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a cancer that starts in the white blood cells called the lymphocytes that are a part of the body's immune system. The statement, released by the Ministry of the Presidency, said on Thursday, November 1, he underwent a surgical procedure and on November 6, he was discharged and returned to his official accommodation. The second phase of treatment started yesterday and the president is likely to remain in the hospital for two to three days. The statement said the 73-year-old Guyanese president is in fine form and in a good frame of mind. He is also expected to fully recover under the supervision of his doctors. President Granger arrived in Havana, Cuba on October 30 for a medical investigation which he deemed necessary because of an unusual physical discomfort. While the president is away, Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu carries out his functions. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Meanwhile, opposition leader Baron Jagdo wished President Granger a speedy recovery while noting that his peers are with him. He also noted that the matter of the President's health is non political. Um, on behalf of the People's Progressive Party and the parliamentary opposition, I once again, I did it earlier, wish the President a full recovery. Um, we, our prayers are with him. The entire nation's prayers are with him um, for a safe return and full recovery. And this is not a political matter. He's the president of Guyana and politics aside, I think we should um, all let him know there in Cuba that he has our full prayers. Meanwhile, the Private Sector Commission has said it is deeply saddened by the news of the President's illness and expressed confidence of his full recovery given his fighting spirit. The executive and membership of the Private Sector Commission express the hope that President Granger will be speedily restored to good health. The Private Sector Commission also extended good wishes to the First Lady and the rest of the family and pray for fortitude and strength for them. 
We tell you now that the Ghana Elections Commission has confirmed that it is in the receipt of the final results from the local authority areas and will be making the official declaration tomorrow. The Ghana Elections Commission will be making the official declaration of the results for the local government elections tomorrow. Public Relations Officer Yolanda Ward confirmed to this newscast that all ballots have been counted and declared in the 80 local authority areas. But the Commission is mandated to complete the verification process before it announces the official results. Even though GCOM promised to have the results declared in 24 hours, it is now three days without final declaration. Based on statements of poll received from its agent countrywide, the People's Progressive Party have declared itself the front-runner in the elections. The party claimed it won 52 out of the 80 local authority areas. The party recorded a massive win in the last election, taking 48 of the 70 local authority areas. 101 persons have so far been killed in Guyana's roadways in 89 accidents so far for 2018, prompting officials here to launch a new campaign dubbed Stop the Tears, Slow Down, Drive Cautiously. Based on a World Health Organization's Global Status Report on Road Safety, the total number of road traffic deaths is about 1.2 million per year, with the highest road traffic fatality rates in low-middle-income countries. With Guyana among the number of developing countries where a majority of its society live in low-middle-income families, statistics show that the figures are higher from those. For Guyana this year alone, some 101 persons have been killed in 8 and 9 road accidents a figure that is alarmingly high for a country with a population of just over 750,000. Nearly half of the people who die on the world's roads are pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists. Considerable economic losses are not only incurred by the victims and their families, but also the nation on a whole. Road crashes cost countries between 1 to 3 percent of their gross national product. In Guyana, road traffic accidents account for a large number of deaths among both adults and children. The large number of deaths and injuries in these vulnerable groups join the persistent problem of infectious diseases and the steady rise of chronic diseases to give many developing countries like Guyana a triple burden, a third major cause of preventable morbidity and mortality. Coordinator of the Guyana National Road Safety Council, Ramona Durga, stressed the need for persons to be concerned enough about road safety that they will take the necessary measures in safeguarding themselves and others when using the country's roadways. In 2017, 94 persons were killed on Guyana's roadways, while in 2016, the deaths were 100. National Road Safety Week commences on November 25, and the Guyana Police Force is expected to ramp up its public awareness activities. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up after the break, Jack Dio blames government's poor management for economic collapse. Stay with us. Peace on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Christmas is for celebrating. Imagine having a warm, cozy Christmas with your loved ones, with your favorite food, presents, and all the things you want. With GBTI's Christmas loan, you get to celebrate in style like never before. Simply apply for your loan between October and December for quick approvals and a chance to win. A trip for two to Trinidad, compliments of Liat. An overnight trip for two at the Arawai Resort. A weekend for two at the Ghana Marriott. Visit your nearest GBTI bank and apply today. Terms and conditions apply. GBTI, we see Christmas through your eyes. I want to celebrate Christmas with Christmas. 
Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props and more, check out exclusive decor design Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Welcome back, you're watching MTV's News Update. Former President and Opposition Leader Bharat Jagdu believes the AP and UAFC's poor management style is responsible for the collapse of Ghana's economy. Jagdu, who once served as the country's finance minister, warns that dark days are ahead for Ghana under the current government's economic model. The government has come in for criticism, many signaling their discontent with the pace in which the economy is growing. Bharat Jagdeo, who served as the country's finance minister before becoming president in 1999, says the increased cost of living lies largely on the actions taken by the government. Jagdeo, a highly acclaimed Russian-trained economist, was at the time referring to the government's heavy borrowing and overspending. Things are hard, people are losing their jobs, but it's not just short-term damage, it's long-term damage because another generation would have to fix those problems like we had to fix the problems of the past and that takes away development opportunities. The former president, who served for 12 years, linked the heavily taxed economy as another contribution for an increased cost of living. He said the management style of the government will stymie progress in the future. Five years is enough, because if you, with their style of management, with their economic philosophy, with the incompetence that reigns in this government and the corruption, our country is heading to disaster. We're going back. To the past. The government expended $173 billion in 2017 and is expected to spend $184 million for 2018. The police force's traffic department has made it clear it is adopting a no-nonsense approach to loud music in public transportation, particularly minibuses. The Shanagom's Kerniness reports. Second in command of the Ghana Police Forces Traffic Department, Deputy Superintendent Dennis Steven has reminded drivers that the laws clearly state that there should be no amplified music in any type of public transportation. In holding drivers accountable for breaching the said regulation, Steven noted that ranks of the traffic department are arduously working to clamp down on the use of amplifiers in public transportation. What we are currently doing, we have an exercise against boombox and with that we have several exercises for the past uh, few few days few weeks targeting those boom, boom boxes and um, minibuses with minibuses um, with music um, so our exercises continue across the country as to 
persons breaching the road service license has been written music. As regard those persons found guilty of breaching the laws, Stephen indicated that those persons are first warned regarding the breach. He explained in most instances the driver of a minibus is not the owner of the said minibus. So information provided through the road service license document remains with the vehicle's owner. However, as to why many such drivers continue to break the law despite being warned, Stephen stressed that that simply lies with a lack of forwarded information from the owners of those vehicles to drivers. So what we observe is that because of the, the, the owners do not educate or inform the drivers as to those rules, most of the time it's personal lack of knowledge. And as we what they do, they go and put in this amplified music and so on. And that the only the amplified music, you find these boys having stickers, they're having those raps. According to Stephen, for 2018 so far, exercises to clamp down on amplified music in public transportation were held in March and as recent as several weeks ago. While some may have complied, Stephen related that there still remain a small number of persons who continue to breach the regulations of the road service license. This, he said, will not be tolerated and the force will continue to work towards weeding out this kind of lawlessness. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Council for Trade and Economic Development today met in Guyana to discuss crucial issues concerning the implementation of the carbon single market and economy. Here is more. The Caribbean Community Council for Trade and Economic Development, COTED, of Ministers today met in Guyana for the 47th meeting on the chairmanship of Minister Foreign Trade of Barbados, Sandra Husbands. The carbon single market and economy topped the agenda for discussion with emphasis on its implementation and plans to make it more effective. Our ministers, we have to ensure that there is full compliance with the provisions of the treaty as it applies to trade and the movement of people. The failure to make progress in eliminating barriers to trade has caused some to question the utility of the work we do in this council. The CSME will stand out as a vehicle for sustainable development and position countries that take advantage in the international sphere. The Secretary General says it is important for countries to accelerate progress in the consolidation of the CSME. This will ensure persons in the region trade goods and services without any hindrance. Among the other items up for discussion are the direction of CARICOM's external trade policy and the community's trade relations with the United Kingdom post-Brexit. Here is Rajesh Lakhan with What Do People Say? As the Ghana Elections Commission reported a low voter turnout at the recently held local government elections, especially in the city, we asked persons the reason for the lack of interest. Here is what the people had to say. Um, I feel because it wasn't done in, in a while and a lot of people, especially young people, don't really know about it. That is why they had a low turnout. I'm not sure what might have been the contributing factors, but I, what, I, what I've observed is that um, people in their attitudes, they're, you know, they're neither supportive nor necessarily against. It's just that they're in a limbo, they don't know which side to choose. I think um, the government and those responsible, the other um, candidates, etc., they have not done their work properly. It's not like when they were preparing for the general elections. This is something that some of them apparently have taken for granted. And by virtue of that, we have this result. Well, I think um, confidence now, right? The confidence in the people, the people towards those major political parties. What I'm thinking, this is my opinion, the people, you've tried the PPP, you've tried the PNC, now the APNU, AFC, they've all failed the people. The PPP was trying, now the PPP is a, I would say a renewed PPP, but the point is this, you have to keep your promises, you cannot come, you cannot say to people, look, we're going to do this, 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 when you get in there, now we give you the confidence vote, we put you in. You don't do nothing. You, you, just, you just accept it as a power, yes. The people give you the power. You just lie low on it, maybe. This is local government for the next three years. Maybe in the general and regional elections, the same things happen. 
you put these people in that you have the confidence in and they let you down. So that, that's a major reason. Now, the people that got the votes, the parties that got the votes, God bless them. Go ahead now and execute. It's my wishing, the wish for me to whoever, whether which party, the APNU, the PPP, the AFC, go ahead and execute. You have councillors now that have been elected to do things. I think that basically it could be the, um, the people them who they put up as representatives for the areas. There could be one. And next thing to Ghana, you fed up with certain things that's going on. Because you put your best effort forward to make sure you do what you got to do. And when you finish now, they get certain things you're not getting, certain basic things you're not getting, you know? And, you know, people fed up, man. I tell you, I talk to a lot of people, people fed up. Um, I believe for once it was the fact in that a lot of the candidates, they didn't come out to socialize much with the residents. So a lot of persons mostly were aware of these people via posters and so forth, as opposed to face-to-face -face contact. And then there was a fact in that some of us, at least I can say for me, we weren't quite aware as to what their um, position was in terms of certain community topics and areas etc. I think what, what I would have heard is that some youths weren't aware of exact date and enough persons actually, in actually see the members to the community actually did what they set out for do in the previous election. So I guess that was a reason persons didn't turn out this year. What would have contributed to that is disaccustomed see there's a big word right? We make up the word in Guyana. It means that the people didn't even realize that they supposed to got something named local government election. But it was popularized the other day by, the, by this new government. But then the people didn't catch on to it yet and realize how important it is to elect the person that can run your constituency. You understand? So I would like them to get more public with it. And for our next local government election, there must be rallying as serious as the rallying for the national election. The campaign that they, that they, um, that they run, they make, they're making too much of promises and they ain't fulfilling them. It's like, man, they, they're telling people that they do certain things and they ain't doing them. GCOM reported that George Strong has a dismal 28% voter turnout. For MTV News Updates, I'm Rajesh Lakan. We now join Celine Griffith with today's score Rangda. A woman police constable and mother of three who was also two months pregnant was today hauled before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for throwing acid in the face of her lover. 30-year-old Cassandra Walter of School Street, All Boys Town, who was stationed at the Brigdam Police Station, pleaded not guilty to the charge which read that on November 7 at Camp and North Road, Georgetown, she unlawfully and maliciously wounded Anthony Paul with intent to maim this figure or cause actual bodily harm. According to reports, the accused and victim shared a relationship. The victim allegedly caught the woman cheating with the father of her previous children and requested a DNA test for the baby she is carrying, after which he moved out of the home they shared. A few days later, he received a call from Walter who claimed to be unwell and requested to be taken to the hospital. When he arrived to pick up the woman, she allegedly got in the back of the vehicle and took out a small glass bottle, the contents of which she threw on the left side of Paul's face. Upon feeling the burning sensation, Paul drove to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation and was admitted where he remains a patient. A report was made and Walter was arrested after which he admitted to the offence. Police prosecutor Simone Payne objected to bail based on the nature of the charge, the seriousness of the offence and the fact that the victim is currently hospitalised. However, bail was set to the tune of $300,000 and Walter is scheduled to reappear in court on November 23. Reporting for MTV's Court Roundup, Celine Griffith. Coming up after the break, MTV's sports update and more. Stay with us. You know, since we find out about your future shop, me house looks nicer than you own. Hey, hey, hey. credit with How you can afford to buy all them things? Let me tell you. No, I'm not going to catch again. I'm a secret. No, come on. I'm a 
magic. You're too fast. Mind the business. And, uh, <laughs> Excuse me, Uncle. Tell me something. How credit can afford to buy so much thing from I only now walk no way? It's because now we introduce our new discount card. Apply oh. now for your discount card at Tayo Future Shop. Every time you shop using your discount card, your percentage increases. Start from 5% off. Your next purchase, 7% off. Then, 10% off, etc. Until you start getting wholesale and factory price. Check in store for more details. Conditions apply. Hey, help me get me tie your discount card. <laughs> Wait, man. Why you do next, man? Buy the whole entire store? You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towels. Lens, our product, your creation. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivan's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Gafools proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafours setting a new benchmark. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. Defending champions West Indies beat South Africa by 31 runs to leapfrog England at the top of Group A in the Women's World T20. 
Here are the highlights of last evening's game. It's slashed away and just out of the reach. She's edged it and in the end it's gone to slip. Edged and gone. Oh, she sliced this away and this should be a wicked center. Gone. Violent shot. Nice shot, lovely. Oh, it's a full toss. Chance out. Up in the air. She's charged it. Systems are in place for the Terence Ali National Boxing Championship, which punches off tomorrow. The event, which will be graced by Ghana's top boxers, will last until Sunday, November 18. As tribute to former national champion Terence Ali, the event will see 15 grand amateur throwdowns. Ghana's seasoned boxers Jason Barker, Colin Lewis, Dennis Thomas, Kevin Alicock, and Jamal Eastman will also take center stage in an expected flare of power punches. Defending champions, the Guyana Police Force Gym won this competition 16 years in a row, but boxing enthusiasts claim they can be dethroned this year, as stiff competition will be from the Republican and Forgotten Youth Foundation. The National Gymnasium will host the grand event, punching off from 19 hours tomorrow to Sunday, November 18. Chelsea Griffiths, reporter for MTV Sports Update. The first segment of the Infra Trans Guyana Incorporated sponsored outdoor archery championship kick started at the Carfest Sports Club. The much anticipated final will be held this weekend. The ground saw 15 archers competing in the men, women and junior women classes. Competitors were classed as individual women, individual junior women and individual men, all shooting at 300 ranking round. Excitement was in the air and the competition was intense as everyone braved the blistering heat, battling with the wind. The ladies and junior women started off the individual categories, followed by the men's individual and the mixed teams. After the individual rounds were completed, athletes were paired for the mixed team ranking rounds. The highest scoring male was paired with the lowest scoring female and vice versa. Seven mixed teams contested for the top four spots as they grew. The first four mixed teams will move on to the semi-finals and finals to be held on Sunday, November 18 at the Carfesta Sports Club ground, Carfesta Avenue from 11 hours. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MCV Sports Update. Stay with us, more news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome back. We now go in the region. The Argentine Senate, the Upper House of Argentine National Congress, has started discussions on the government's 2019 budget, which includes tax hikes, expenditure cuts, and other austerity measures. The Law House, the Chamber of Deputies, had on October 25th passed the unpopular austerity budget designed to meet the stiff requirements of a $57 billion International Monetary Fund bailout amid arrests of demonstrators staged a violent protest outside the legislature building. The government is trying to starve off an economic crisis with help from the IMF. 
Despite protests against these austerity measures, the budget is likely to be approved. And internationally, a fighting broke out among lawmakers in Sri Lanka's parliament after weeks of political turmoil over who should lead the country. MPs rushed on to the floor of the House the day after a motion of confidence was passed over the controversially appointed new Prime Minister Mahindra Rakapasa. At least one MP was taken to hospital as punches were thrown and lawmakers from rival parties shouted at each other. Earlier in the session, the Parliament's Speaker said Sri Lanka now had no function in government. The President's decision last month to sack PM Aranil Vishashinge and replace him with former leader Mr. Ragapasa has led to weeks of turmoil. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 799. Let's turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Jagde files no confidence motion against APNU AFC government. President Granger diagnosed with cancer expected to fully recover. Police going after minibuses with loud music. And in sports, South Africa lose 9 for 28 as West Indies defend 107 in women World T20. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanking you for watching. Have a good night.